So we used to have enough power to make everything run from the tree farm to the bread farm, everything. But now, if we flick this, everything stops. So our beloved windmill has reached its capacity and it's time we do something about that. Hello everybody, I'm Diosol25 and welcome to the Create SMP. Oh, we're over here by the villager trains. So these are the trains we built in a previous episode that will house our villagers for trading. So they'll all end up in here in their little cubbies and we can come in and trade with them. And then when we're done, we can just send them on their way back into the storage area. But currently, villager trading is not our biggest concern. No, no, it's power. And we have run out of it. So what I was thinking is that in today's episode, we look into building our first ever steam engine to get some basic power into the base and make sure we've got a bit of extra so we can build a few more machines and not have to worry about running dry. So I want to get right into that and let me go show you the area where I thought we should do that. So over here we have the starter house, the windmill, this little path we had made running down and this river that we said we want to incorporate in some form of power. Well, that is it. <laughs> you guys can see I destroyed some of the landscape over here because that is where I think we should build a little power farm because we've done a lot on the backside and I think this area needs something and I hope I can do something nice about it. So I think first things first, let's get in the steam engine itself. And here it is, the steam engine. <laughs> It's not 100% working yet because I wanted to bring you guys back for those parts. So let's get on right into that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to pump water into this thing. And we also need to give it heat. So we're going to go down here. And down here I added a pump for now because I didn't want it to flow the wrong way. So let's do that. And if we should add this, we see the water pushing up, which is perfect. I just want to go down here and just grab the pump I dropped in here yeah? and let's head on back up let's close that one oh another one I'll fill in these gaps later on so now we've got water flowing into the tank as we can see we've got water going in which is perfect and now we need to give heat so currently it will produce 2000 stress units via the nine engines but let's give it some heat so we're going to tell it it needs to pick up lava buckets from here and it should deposit them into these blaze burners but also it should place the empty buckets into this thing here and if we push this down there we go it's working and now i'm going to chuck in into here nine buckets it sent all nine out at once so i quickly want to stop that let's just make this so it's one one and just one on this side so we'll constantly only dispatch one. Let's try again. So it should drop them out singularly. Goes up there. Gets filled. Comes by this way. We've got quite a lot of lava. I might expand lava form. So the hand will pick it up. And we'll put it in the burner. And there it goes. So now we went from producing... 2,000 stress units to 16,000 stress units and our heat only at one bar so it's going to constantly continue doing that and it's currently going very slow but I will speed that up with uh, one of those rotational speed controllers there we are up to 32,000 and that's just of it so now the last thing we need to do is we need to go up all the way to the top there let's see if we run around this way whoop we missed that jump and if we go up here, we can actually insert the shafts and the arms get connected to it. Let's do that. And now we're currently producing 32 and it will constantly increase as we get more lava flowing. So I'm going to see to adding some more speed to this. And then I'll bring you guys back once the speed goes up and we see what we have. There it is running a lot faster. So what I did is if we go into free cam down here, I just 
change this setup instead of it just going down and directly into the system I made it go into a rotational speed controller and I just routed the power and switched it up to I think 96 um, what's that RPMs yes RPMs so 96 rotations per minute so it speed sped up the belts sped up the hand and now we're currently producing 146 or well, 47,000 stretch units via nine engines i did test it if i add more engines it doesn't change the amount of stretch units so that will stay like that the water is also doing quite well it's adding a lot more which i'm happy about and yeah lava is also picking up 88 so i might still expand this because it's currently what's this now one two three four five by nine so i might just make it a nine by nine grid but at the moment it seems to be keeping up i'll just keep an eye on that so we have power and it looks cool but I don't think it fits into the area. I think it stands out <laughs> like a sore thumb. And maybe that we should try and replicate something like this in this area and incorporate the steam engine. Yeah, I think I think we need to do that. So what about a little time lapse? <laughs> Sit back, enjoy. <music> covered new build and i have to say it looks epic the integration of the steam with this current style worked out quite nice so if we head on in we've got the steam power sticking out over there we've got this little walkway going down around the corner we've got a little area i need a door still and if you walk in you actually see the entire machine you've got this catwalk looking down you can walk down and you can even see down there so this look, looks epic. I do have this going down, telling us our current mod and rotational speed, the power we're using. And if we head on through over here, we did, however, suffer a casualty. And if we crouch through here, the casualty being the bread maker. So I had to move a few things around because I wanted the water pump system on a separate system as a steam engine. So what I'll have to do is maybe fix this roof, change it a bit because it's coming through there and rework all of this and insert a new breadificator 40,000 or whatever I called it. <laughs> but until then, we've got quite a lot of sweet cakes and then also this cave I decorated, but I did install a little maintenance shaft which I'll add a door to and we currently have that create power coming all the way over here from that system so I think what I want to do next is quickly sort out just some basics in regards to the materials in here 
And I'll do that by means of this method about crushing to turn stuff in, throwing certain things away, sending stuff directly to storage. So I want to do a little bit of prep work and then I'll bring you guys back once we're ready with these items. So a bunch more work has been done. The power we relayed from the steam um, engine comes all the way over here and it goes down into a switch over here that says plant control, which is up for on, down for off. And when down here, we create a little system for it which works perfectly and then what i also did is i went ahead and cleaned up this area i hid away the piping so we can see the inventory over here and i also cleaned up the area down here and made it quite nice and there we have the power and in this area over here i actually kept open and i opened it up because on that list we've got a bunch of boards let's quickly get out of this let's do we can just do this for now We've got things we want to send to storage. So all our dirts, our soul sands, our stone, and our deep slate blocks, we just want to put away in storage. And we're not going to send it to our big storage because we don't want to fill that unnecessary too quickly. So the idea is to maybe then do some form of a safe over here. And we can just bring the stuff all the way from over here, pull it from there, send it all the way there. And we'll do that using funnels and filters. So let me quickly get that system in. So we currently have the system hooked up. Items are falling back into the vaults. You can see they're entering the vault, but they're also leaving the vault. And that is because we hooked up the setup down here, which as you guys can see, items gets moved along to the vault over there. And then the unwanted items, we end up burning immediately. I think we just finished burning all of them. And now these items will just get stored at the end of the line so let's jump on out let's have a look and yeah they start to fill in so i would say the system works let's have a look yeah they're still coming and I, this should be the last of the items i know there's still some more coming but yes i'm gonna let it filter and then i'll meet you guys up top okay so hear me out i might have built a leak bit more between clips a whole lot more <laughs> so let me quickly run you through so what we have over here is encased fan that blows upwards and basically on behind this we've got a filter with all the items we want to crush it gets blown into this buffer this buffer has a bit of items in it but it also has a stockpiling switch which turns off this mechanism that releases the items so when this is full we won't have items sitting over here and despawning and then these items go all the way along this conveyor belt over here let's just quickly jump up here it's still a, it's like a little gymnastics course over here we've got two brass funnel uh funnels tunnels two brass tunnels and what they do is this one has a filter in exactly the same as the one we have over there it just separates all the items and this one just has cobble so what we do is we just crush half the cobble and the other half gets deposited into this vault so we have some backup cobble, cobble and we're not losing all the cobble and then these items all go into these brass funnels that then split them equally so those funnels are also connected to a stockpile switch over here so as soon as this vault is at i think 90 percent full 95 percent full it will emit a signal up there and all those um, funnels will lock thus the crushing process will stop and it's been running well we've got 14,000 gravel we've got some copper nuggets we've got bone meal we've got sand we've got quartz we've got a bunch of things so i would say all in all this is going well and then later on we can wash these items iron to get iron nuggets gold and maybe clay i said maybe i don't know if i'm gonna need clay but yeah this is what i've been up to between clips hmm a little bit of work has been done so we're back here at the engine room and I want to see how much of our power we're using. So it's still 64 refs per minute. And we're using, oh wow, we're using about 17,000, 11% of all our stress units. So we've got 130,000 more to go just from this one little machine. <laughs> That's amazing. A lot has been done. We created a new power source, namely the steam engine, built a beautiful structure around it, and we sorted our mining resources we have some of it stockpiling in the general resource and we have some of it getting crushed and we're also throwing away the junk <laughs> but sadly that will be all for this episode 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do hit the like button. And if you have not subscribed yet, subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. I appreciate it and have a fantastic time. Bye for now.